Chico, you mentioned that you're also on the faculty of William Patterson University, yes? Mm -hmm. How did you connect with William Patterson? Well, oh, about 28 years ago, I had a trombone player in my band who was recently deceased, and uh, he was going to Montclair State. And he said, how would you like to come and do a lecture there? Because they don't know anything about Latin jazz. So I did a lecture at Montclair State, and then William Patterson heard about it because that was a state university too. It was actually a college then. And uh, they had quite a few students that were interested in Latin jazz. So they sent me, a, well, not an email, but they called me and said, would you like to do a lecture here? And I did one there, and they were very well pleased, and they offered me a position there. So I've been there for 38 years now. <laughs> and you direct a, j a Latin jazz orchestra? 16 piece full Latin jazz orchestra, and we've had quite a few celebrities there with us. Oh, some celebrities? Yes. Elaborate. Uh, Paquito de Rivera, Dave Valentine, Joe Cuba, oh, so many. Gary Bartz, uh, who else? Um, Claudio Roditi, these are all jazz people. And uh, just so many. Um, uh, I, you know, when you want to think about them, you can't. Over 38 years, there's been so many. And I think that the, the, the gratifying thing about it is that uh, Charlie Palmieri, who was my teacher, was the, that's Eddie's brother. Actually, he's wow. a better piano player as far as I'm concerned, but <laughs> okay. he's gone now. Okay. And uh, as I said, there's just so many that go down th the pike, and uh, I really enjoy it. And here at Essex, you've taught the Latin Jazz Ensemble, and now you're teaching piano. Mm -hmm. And so let me ask you this. Do you find that students are knowledgeable now of Latin jazz artists and the style, or is this something that you find you have to completely open their eyes to? That's a good question because the university the universality of music has become so uh, broad scoped. In other words, you play one thing, they think you can play anything, and people have gotten away from the roots of music. Uh, by that I mean they call this world music and stuff like that. That's not what's happening. Uh, the students now today are becoming a little more cognizant of the fact that everything can't sound the same. So maybe out of that 100,000, you may find 10 that want to get down to the roots. I want to play Latin jazz the way it's supposed to be played, not the way I go into every disco or whatever and it all sounds the same after the first 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. You put two conga drums in it, they think it's Latin jazz, you see? So if we go back and I ask you first, who were your mentors? Who were the musicians mm -hmm. that made a great impression on you? Well, first and foremost, uh, the, with piano players, of course, it was Art Tatum. Errol Garner, I idolized. I loved his style of playing. And among the piano players, of course, there was the Charlie and Eddie Palmieri in the later years, but mostly jazz people, Art Tatum, people like that. And as far as the ranges go, down the line, Quincy Jones, Henry Mancini, I worked at ASCAP for six years, too, and I got to meet a lot of these guys. I was a music analyst over there. And uh, who else, Cy Coleman, uh, man, so many. <laughs> uh, Leroy Holmes, I did an album for him. And uh, just so many other, other great arrangers that I really love. But Mancini, Nelson Riddle, people like that, I, I, I love them. And of course, Quincy Jones and Billy Strayhorn, people like that. So these great, fantastic musicians passed the torch to you. Mm -hmm. And now, what advice are you passing <coughs> on to your students? Well, I always tell my students, Dr. Austin, in my class, I'm not teaching you just to be a piano player. I'm teaching you to be a musician. Because so many people, as we discussed earlier, go into the show business aspect of it. And if you've ever watched some of these shows where they have the tryouts for, you know, like American Idol and things like that, a lot of these people think they can sing. And when the judges <laughs> tell them they can't, they get mad. You know, singing in the shower is not like singing in front of people and having full command of what you're doing. Amen. So there's a difference between the artist and the performer. Mm -hmm. Susan Boyle, classic example. She gets up and sings from Cats. Midnight, not a sound mm -hmm. from the paper. A cappella, and everybody's crying in the audience. Mm -hmm. That's music. So <laughs> the students we have now, 21st century, mm -hmm. you've been blessed to have several decades of working with students and performing. How would you compare, say, the students from, say, maybe 25, 30 years ago to students that are now in 2013? Outside of classical music, I would say that the interest has fallen off more in performance, as I said earlier, than actually learning your craft. Um, I remember a movie called Field of Dreams with Kevin Costner, and one of the lines in the movies is, if you build this stadium, they will come. In other words, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Do what you do well, and people will come. But if you go out and do the hype and the advertising and the media and the spin doctors, and they come, how many times, Dr. Austin, have you heard a record and, or a CD, 
and then you go to hear the person in person, they don't sound anything like they do. They sound yes. worse. You know why? Because on the CD, they got top of the line mm -hmm. musicians. But here, you know, on the stadium, in the stadium, they got guys they just picked up, and it don't sound the same. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and, and <laughs> tell me this. One of the things that I have spoken out uh, and tried to encourage, there are so many keyboardists that only play by ear. Now, you and I both know when we were coming up, we were taught how to read music. I know you've met many keyboardists like this. Mm -hmm. What do you say to them? You mean young people, you mean? Or young just people, older people? Or, or any people, keyboard player? Any keyboard player that's playing by ear, and they think that that's the beginning oh, and the I see end of it. Okay. I tell them, you know, you can only go so far, and then you have to find out what's in here. You can't create, if you play by ear, only creativity. You have to have some basic, you have to have a model or a template to go by. You know, uh, if I may tell you, there is an incident that happened where a man had a, a, a machine and it broke down. The machine cost $50 million, and he called this guy up and said, I need you to fix it. It broke down. I'm losing money. The guy comes in, looks at the machine, hits it one place, and the machine starts working. He sends him a bill for $999,000.50. <laughs> He says, what's the 50 cents for? He said, well, the $990,000 is to look at the machine, and the 50 cents is knowing where to hit it to make it work. Wow. <laughs> That's wow. what I mean. Well, I <laughs> want to thank you again. And I say to my students, from my teacher to me, from me to you, and you definitely have had wonderful, fantastic teachers. And let me just say this. I hope you share your stories with your students. I don't know if you do. I do. But please do. Thank you. And for the third selection, Chico will perform Watermelon.